pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, book. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads, and literally as I put the record button, I, I heard hammering behind me, but I think with my super fantastic microphone, it shouldn't be much of an issue. But I suppose I should do an audio test, shouldn't I? Let me have a listen. Well, in fact, it was rather obnoxious, but it seems to have stopped, so I'll keep going, and if it starts up again, I'm gonna have to move to a new location, which will displease me greatly. <laughs> One of the things that I hate about Japan is there are no public, there's no public seating, benches, chairs. It's, Tokyo doesn't have a lot of wide open spaces, but what wide open spaces it has, like little concrete parkettes, there's one effing bench when there could be 15 benches. It drives me crazy. As somebody who has a really bad back and needs to sit down a lot, I hate that about Japan. Needing to sit down is a sign of laziness and it's culturally unacceptable and I, it just drives me crazy. Sidewalks are often very narrow but the streets that have a wide sidewalk, there's about one bench every five blocks. <sighs> anyway, so this is one of the few benches in the area. Probably all the other ones I might find might be noisier with traffic or in the sun. So I'm hoping that guy keeps quiet. What else do I want to say personally wise? I finally finished all of the paperwork and tax payment stuff for my work visa so that is now in my immigration lawyer's hands and I should find out whether or not I get my work visa renewed. It would be a calamity and a shock if it wasn't uh, within the next few weeks but that's been a kind of a time suck for quite a while. So that's why my Friday Reads is late. Uh, this is my Friday Reads, but it's, I hope that it'll be Friday somewhere in the world by the time I get it posted. It's Saturday about almost lunchtime now. Next week is Golden Week. Golden Week is almost a week-long holiday in May, uh, the first week of May in Japan. And Japanese people work so damn hard that I think more of them would die from overwork than do now if they didn't get this week in May. So I am so looking forward to having next week, I would say 85% off. I have a few classes on Tuesday, Wednesday, because by my request, they were not canceled because I need the money, because there's no such thing as holiday pay for English teachers in Japan. That would be too civilized. I'm sounding rather negative today. I love Japan in many ways, but there's some things that I really hate that I've just mentioned too in the last three minutes. But otherwise, I have the week completely off. And so, there's a Dewey's readathon. I don't do readathons. I'm a, my reading time is always maxed out, so I'm not interested in readathons. I mean, I'm, it appeals to me, but it's just like, no, I, I read enough. I don't want to make myself sick or overly tired to, to read more than I do now. So, but I'm going to kind of have a golden week readathon, I think. Kenji's also off for a few of those days. Most of those days, he and I will get to spend more time together. So. Maybe I won't have so much time to read and it's like, happy or happy, which is better? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> I did finish two books this week, which is a big improvement from last week where I didn't finish any. I finished the poetry book I was doing on audio. It's a brand new collection by the Poet Laureate of the United States, Tracy K. Smith, Wade in the Water. I didn't like it. I liked the first few poems more than I liked the rest of it but much of it, and I believe I stole this line. I kind of had the idea, but I didn't have the brilliant phrase. I think I stole the brilliant phrase from Steve Donahue. Most of these read like vertically stacked prose. There was nothing really poetic about so much of it. And she tried an experiment, which to me didn't work. Well, probably there's lots of poetry readers out there that are being blown away by it, but she's taken letters written by slaves and I think she's just put in a few weird line breaks. I was doing it on audio, so I didn't have the benefit of the line breaks, but they were just letters, historical letters. They weren't, they weren't poetry. And I, do you know what I mean when I say the poet's kind of droning poetry reading voice? I thought the audio narration suffered from that. It was kind of a, it became so monotonous that she was trying to make the words sound much more important and poetic than they were by this da 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 
lots of poets do that when they read their stuff and it's like if you need to do that first of all it's annoying but if you need to do that to make it sound more poetic than it is then you have a problem I don't want to come down too harsh this was a three star read for me but there were uh, some really striking images uh, in a few of them as a whole I was none too impressed there's one vending machine near between my house and here that still has hot coffee in the vending machine so I need it. In much happier news, the only thing that I'm not happy about with regard to this next book is that I finished it because it was definitely one of my top reads of the year. This 1945 novel by the gay novelist Denton Welch, In Youth is Pleasure. I love this book so much. I'm not going to say anything more because I am going to prepare a full review, maybe hopefully this weekend if I have time, but I love this book with all my heart and I am now officially obsessed with Denton Welch, so you're going to be hearing a lot more about him on my channel. No bales again, two weeks in a row. That is a Sean the Book Maniac record, probably in the last two years. I don't think I've gone two weeks without bailing on a book. But I must admit, and Robert of Barter Hordes, if you're listening, I would love for you to weigh in on this. I'm coming close to bailing on Everything Here is Beautiful by Mira T. Lee. I was really enjoying it. The first several chapters were narrated by the mentally ill Chinese-American woman's sister, and I loved those chapters. And then it switched to her... Latino, undocumented, American boyfriend point of view, and I'm not enjoying it. I just find it's not grabbing me at all, his perspective. Now, I am doing it on audio, so maybe I'm just not connecting with the audio narrator's voice, which happens, and that's... I always get nervous when I start an audiobook with multiple narrators, because inevitably I don't like one of them. That's going to be a kind of a theme of today's Friday Reads find myself not wanting to pick it up, not wanting to continue listening, because I'm just not connecting with this boyfriend's perspective. It's the, He's telling a story about the same woman who's having mental health challenges, but I'm just not engaged at all by his part of the narrative. So, Robert, if you're listening, did you have that problem? And how much of the rest of this book is narrated by the Latino character? Because I just, I'm not, I'm not finding it viscerally engaging at all. So that might end up being a bail, but I'm going to keep going for a while. And I've started one book, Maggie O'Farrell's most recent novel, I think 2016, This Must Be the Place. I'm doing this as a buddy read vlog collaboration with Kendra Winchester and Leah of Hide and Seek. We're doing it over a two-week period. The first chunk of the vlog will be up next week sometime, perhaps. I'm really enjoying it, so I'm not going to say much more than that. Other than that, what I read just last night sucked me in the most, and it was told through the perspective of the main character's son, Neil, as a 12-year-old American boy, struggling with extreme eczema, as I would pronounce it as a Canadian, eczema. I noticed the audiobook pronounces it eczema, but I've always pronounced it eczema, so I'll give you both, but it just ripped my heart out. I'd never really heard about somebody with, I guess I've seen people, it's kind of like, maybe more common in Japan than in North America, I think, but I've never been pulled deep into the perspective of someone with that problem. Just ripped my heart out, so I'm going to read you two paragraphs. Uh, Neil is 12 years old. His dad has taken him to the severe dermatology clinic for people with really severe skin problems. They kind of wrap him in these, this kind of uh, therapeutic mud and then in sheets or a coat. And he has complete relief from the itchy symptoms for the duration. And they leave it on him for 12 hours or 24 hours or something. goes home in it. And it's the only time he ever feels free of it. And so they give him this treatment, I don't know, on a regular basis. But he's at the clinic with his dad and they're waiting to get in and the clinic is backed up so they're waiting an extra long time and his dad starts freaking out and then stress makes eczema worse, apparently, and so it triggers a severe reaction. Neil feels his eyes fill, feels the burn take hold. His hands spring upright of their own accord and begin to tear at his neck in a sawing motion, back and forth, across the skin of his throat. The feel of it is an exquisite, forbidden, torturing release. Yes, he tells himself, you are scratching. You are, even though you shouldn't. But how good it is, how amazing, but how dreadful it will be when he stops. 
if he stops, if he can ever end it. Next to him, you can hear his father searching his pockets for something, lotion or spray, whatever he can reach first. Then he is putting his hands over Neil's, getting his fingers between Neil's nails and his neck. But Neil is not letting go, not permitting him entry. He cannot stop, he cannot. His neck is clasped by a ring of fire, a dementing ruby necklace, and he must tear it off or scratch down until there is nothing left of his skin, until he reaches bone and sinew, and maybe then, only then, will the itching stop. Whew. So yes, uh, this is quite a powerful novel so far, and I'll have much more to say, along with Kendra and Leah in the e-log. Hey, so I said there was a theme here about audio narration, and I forgot to talk about that part of the Maggie O'Farrell audiobook. I was starting to do it as an audio text combo where I listened to the audio while reading the text simultaneously, but I re realized really quickly that I hated the main character, the male narrator's uh, voice, so I abandoned that. And then when I got to chapter two, chapter one was a really long chapter. When I got to chapter two, it went over to the female character's point of view, so I checked out the female audio narrator, and I really liked her voice. So I'm doing kind of a hodgepodge where I'm only reading the main character's chapters textually and listening and reading when it's the female narrator. And then just to finish off, a couple of books I'm looking forward to coming up starting next week. The first one... I've talked about before on a page 112 book haul and maybe another video. Soviet Milk by Nora Ekstina, a Latvian novel translated by Margita Kailaitis. I predict this is going to be a five-star read for me. I'm doing this as a buddy read with Britta Bowler. I'm really looking forward to that. So you'll hear more about that in coming days and weeks. And also a NetGalley novel that I think it's just come out in the last week. Debut novel, I believe, from Karis Davies called West. And I read and loved Karis Davies' short story collection a few years ago. I think it was published a few years ago, but I read it last year. The Redemption of Galen Pike. It's just a wonderful collection. Uh, Karis Davies, as the name perhaps suggests, is Welsh-born. She lived a dozen years in America, but now she lives in Lancaster in England. And this novel is, is about a widowed mule breeder. I don't know if his wife died or the mule died, but <laughs> who makes a trek down to Kentucky. I don't know where he's based, but it's in America. And this is a historical novel, obviously. Treks down to Kentucky in search of dinosaur bones. Just based on how much I l really liked her short stories, I'm quite stoked to try the novel and we'll be doing a full review because it's from Net Galley. So, apologies for the hammering. I tried to pause while the hammering was going and then quickly make my comments while it went out so I'll edit most of the hammering out. That's my Friday reads. Looking forward to several days of lots of good reading. What are you up to reading wise or otherwise? Thanks for watching.